Star Wars The Acolyte, Episode 6. Here are my thoughts, but first things first, as always, spoiler alert, I will be mentioning spoilers here and there, so if you care about that, you've been warned. And without further ado, let's get right into the review. So we are coming off of the lightsaber battle that occurred in Episode 5, and while I definitely gave props to the choreography, there were still issues in that episode, and I mentioned them in the review. So going into this episode, this was a big filler episode, and I mean it in every sense of the word. Now, I know every episode can't be the most exciting thing ever but this episode really had a lot of meaningless BS in the episode if I'm being completely honest but first let me mention the positives I actually think that Manny Jacinto is doing the best job he possibly can within the writing and I definitely got to tip my hat to him I do find his character Smilo Ren to be somewhat intriguing and it's probably the one thing that's kind of keeping me hanging on to this story finding out about his past even though I have some theories as to where this character comes from and what his motivations are second place goes to Saul who I mentioned in the very beginning of the show I feel that he is also to some extent an interesting character although they definitely are stringing his story out a lot longer than I feel is necessary to just kind of keep us dangling on a string but with that said I do feel the actor is doing a pretty good job once again within the realm of what he is given unfortunately those are the only positive elements that I'm seeing so far and this episode was just littered with issues in the writing some things I can forgive but there's just an abundance of this let's just get right into it like I said in my last review soul better contact the council and yeah he did that immediately, but unfortunately he has AT&T service in his ship because it's just all broken up, completely contrived by the way. Why are you not telling them that I encountered a Sith? That's all you have to say, I encountered a Sith. This character is extremely dangerous to the Jedi Order. He's a very powerful Sith. He just wiped out your entire team. You barely got away with your life. Why are you not conveying that immediately? But because this plot has to make sense with them not seeing Sith for a millennia, of course the comms are down. Then we have May, a character who is very important to the story, but seemingly is one of the worst written because she just, y y the viewer literally, I don't care who you are, even if you're enjoying the show, you have no idea what this character's motivations are. At first she wants to kill the Jedi, then she decides I'm gonna turn myself into the Jedi, then when shit hits the fan, she then decides, no, I am now against the Jedi, she's fighting getting arrested, even though just an episode ago she said I am going to turn myself in, now she's fighting getting turned in, almost gets killed by her former master now she is trying to pretend to be osha even though she hasn't been around osha in like at least a decade so how would you even know how your sister acts now she is trying to take out soul you are marooned with this guy he's the only person that could possibly protect you from your master who got the best of you many times in last episode i just feel like we need more clarity as to what may's motivations are because as a character i don't know how you could really feel anything because she just keeps changing her mind and acting erratically and there's really no rhyme or reason to why she does what she does it really feels to me like they maybe had a plan for this this character but she's been pretty much pulled in all these different directions just to move the plot forward and once again we seemingly have soul just unable to sense May's presence even though earlier in the series they showed that he has an affinity for being able to sense presence to read other people's minds and they even show when he goes up against Smilo Ren that the helmet blocks him from being able to do that so he should be able to sense May's presence he should have been able to sense it immediately but it takes him a long time in this episode. Then you have that sniffer hamster alien guy that they were using to track down the Wookiee Jedi. Well, now he's on the ship. He knows that this is May. And what does he do? Instead of trying to get Soul's attention, after all, he is a tracker, you know, he should at least be able to like nudge him and pull him and do something. He just goes up to May and humps her leg seemingly and then stomps on her foot and the droid like sprays her. And I know they're trying to be funny, but it's really frustrating because this is just stupid behavior and maybe i heard wrong but i heard that this alien race is actually pretty intelligent in the lore now we have a back and forth between osha and smilo ren and every question she asks just feels like it gets a lackluster response she asks, why didn't you kill me am i your prisoner and he's like you're the one holding a weapon it's like okay that's an observation she is holding a lightsaber but why? Why did you capture her? Like, we, we would like an answer to that. He then comments on the fact that she has an attachment to Soul, 
and then just walks away. Later in the episode, she then questions Smilo Ren again, being like, why did you kill all the Jedi? He's like, well, these Jedi were threatening my existence. It's like, dude, you first of all went and killed that Wookiee. Then you pulled out your lightsaber on five Jedi. It's like, what were they supposed to do? She's like, well, you killed Yord. And he's like, well, Yord arrested you. Yord was following orders. He was told to do that by the Jedi Order. It's not a decision that he made on his own. Then she's like, oh, you killed Jackie, Daphne Keen's Jedi character. He's like, well, the relationship you had with her was one-sided. What the heck does that even mean? How is that okay? Oh, okay. All right. I guess I'll keep talking to you then. There are no answers at all. It's just, it, everything is like, it's like, he's like the Riddler. Every answer just has no substance to it. How are these answers acceptable to Osha to convince her to stay and engage with this character in good faith? This stuff just feels so hollow. Like, I just wonder who's watching this and being like, like, it doesn't make sense. I suspect that that green Jedi was Smilo Ren's master, the one with the lightsaber whip, because he has that whip mark on his back. That's just a theory. I have no idea. That just seems to be what I'm gathering here. Meanwhile, we have May questioning Soul about Brendock, like what happened? And we're all in the audience like, yeah, what happened? And suddenly the power comes back and they just seemingly are like, okay, I guess we're not going to find out an answer to that. And then suddenly Soul remembers he has powers and he realizes who May is. The Jedi are now coming to this distress signal that Master Soul put out, Soul decides, I'm gonna just leave. Like, I'm gonna get out of here. For no, like, no apparent reason. I mean, you have May, you apprehended her. Why don't you talk to the Jedi and say what happened? I got attacked by a Sith. May is the apprentice of the Sith. Like, what is happening? Why are you just leaving? Soul has May captured like a super villain. He's standing over her, kind of talking like a villain and being like, I've waited all this time to talk to you and I'm gonna tell you everything. By the way, she has the power of the force. I mean, can those handcuffs actually hold her back from getting free. Whatever, I'll just let that one go. Now, Osha is eating with Smilo Run. I guess all those compelling answers he gave earlier really made her feel comfortable. You get like a lightsaberish scene with that green Jedi person who has the lightsaber whip when she takes out one of those moths that are on that planet while they're kind of surveying the situation that occurred. By the way, I just gotta say this. I'm not trying to be an old man here that's like, I only like lightsabers, but the practicality of a lightsaber whip when compared to a regular lightsaber feels like something that just comes with just so many unnecessary hazards to wield that it just makes more sense to use a lightsaber. And how would a lightsaber fight even happen with a lightsaber whip? I mean, does it have the ability to turn into a lightsaber? I guess that's the way that they're gonna handle that, but I just don't understand the value in using a lightsaber whip other than just to have a moment in the show where you're like, oh, look, it's something different. I don't know. That's just like, I guess you could call that a nitpick. And then the episode ends with Osha putting on Smilo Ren's mask that both blocks the force, but also enhances the force. That whole interaction was just so frustrating to watch. The only time that she actually gets ticked off is when Smilo Ren's like, oh, the Jedi Order kicked you out. Why is that the thing that tips you over the edge when he just literally killed everyone? He did a bunch of things to you that I think cut a little bit deeper than him being like, you got kicked out of the Jedi Order. So you pretty much get this drawn out episode that feels devoid of much substance to the viewer. You have Osha and Smilo Ren and he's giving a lot of non-answers back to her questions. We find out that his helmet is made of cortosis and that he was once a Jedi, but other than that, all the answers are just him dancing around. It's seemingly enough for Osha, despite all the tragic things that he has done, for her to stick around, eat soup with him, talk with him in good faith, and put on his helmet. Meanwhile, you have Sol and May. Sol ends up discovering May, as pretty much everyone predicted he would through his abilities anyway. He decides to make a questionable decision where he gets out of Dodge before the Jedi show up, which could potentially incriminate him rather than just sticking around and saying, hey, I saw a Sith. Also, he can question May in seclusion. So that is the episode, essentially. And listen, we'll wait till the end to see if this comes together in some way, shape or form. And I will be glad if it does. But if this continues down this path, it really begs the question. Was there an idea in there that was decent that ended up just getting changed and edited and just altered? Because especially with May's actions, they're just so knee jerk in nature that you don't even understand what's her motivation anymore. I mean, what is the point to what's going on here? That's my thoughts on the Acolyte episode six. Let me know yours in the comments below. Did you like this episode? Did you not like this episode? Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I will leave you with my last review to episode five. And as always, 
always, my name's Eric Rosas, and I hope you all have a fantastic day.